Good morning! Well, for me, probably not for you, and welcome to this week's pet pairing. So, I just posted my finally redone ranking of my Pat McGrath palettes. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but uh, I just wanted to say that during that process, I was kind of making mental notes of palettes that I would like to revisit a little bit more. So, that is why today we're going to be doing a look with the Celestial Nirvana and the Bronze Seduction palettes, because I feel like both of these have fallen a little bit more on the sidelines in the last couple of months, and I sort of need to dig back into them and revisit them a little bit more, so that, you know, I kind of like re-fall in love with them. So, that's what we're doing today. I'm going to start doing my makeup, going to apply my eyeshadow primer, which as of late has been my Inglot eyeshadow keeper. So the first thing I wanted to say is a huge thank you to all of you and your incredibly sweet response to that video because not only did you just like enjoy watching me ramble about my Pat McGrath palettes for an hour but a lot of you were also just very sweet mentioning that you're very grateful that I took the time to make this video because it was a huge investment of time and energy on my side. YouTube is just a hobby for me and I have a very, I don't want to say full because I don't know that that's the correct terminology here, but like I have a very like full rounded life outside of YouTube. I have a very busy job, I have a 40 year old, I have a lot of friends that I like to hang out with, so it's theoretically what I can invest in terms of time for YouTube is pretty minimal. Like I can only film mostly low effort videos such as these like sort of chatty get ready with me's. I'm taking the Too Faced um, fluff and I can never remember the name of this fluff and hold laminating brow wax and the type of videos that involve a little bit more effort such as even something like my monthly roundup and empties or a ranking video or some sort of like a swatch video, these I can only do on the weekends. And if my weekends are already pretty planned, and they often are, then I have very little time. Like I tried yesterday morning to film a uh, my monthly roundup and empties for the month of April and it was a hot mess. I sort of felt a little bit stressed because I was in a rush since I have to do this before work. So I have to do my makeup and then I have to film the video. So I was already like feeling a little bit stressed out that I need to really like, there's no time for me to r ramble or not to have organized thoughts. And the more you think about needing to have organized thoughts, I'm taking the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, the less likely you are to actually have organized thoughts. Oh, by the way, before I take this one, I'm actually going to take my uh, Auric Glow Lust underneath my eyes to hydrate them a bit because it's the time of the month and my skin is not having it. So after having to do my uh, intro several times because I kept stumbling upon my words, uh, one of my colleagues was texting me because he needed like uh, input or something. So in the end, I ended up quitting on doing that video and I was still quite late for work and I felt quite annoyed at myself for my poor like time managing skills. So as much as I want to be someone who can, you know, get up early and organize themselves to be able to film the type of videos which are a little bit more chatty before work, uh, that's just not me. I can do like low effort kind of videos such as chatty get ready with me when I'm going to uh, work and I can only do these other types of videos in my weekends. And the pet ranking has been on my mind for at least a year, but uh, I, as I also mentioned in the actual video, I had the feeling that ranking these palettes has become more difficult for me precisely because I have gotten to know them so well throughout this series. I've just used them so much more, I've gotten to know them so much better and I kept changing my mind about uh, what my top five would potentially look like. So last Friday when I finally got the final, the final, and last Friday when I finally got the final push to do this, I just basically sat and I put it down on my iPad as it came, didn't like think too hard, I just was like, okay, whatever I decide on the spot that is my top five is my top five and that will be it. And I was super happy, I went to film the video and I filmed the video and just as I was about to film my outro, I realized that my camera wasn't recording and I was like, wait, did I forget to press on the button? I'm pretty sure that I didn't forget to press on the button. But as it turned out, lesson learned, my SD card can't really take two hours or like more than two hours of HD footage. And I had gone on and on without realizing that at some point my SD card was full, my camera had stopped recording and 
he usually warns me about that but it's like with small letters like in the corner like you have I don't know this many minutes remaining uh, to film and usually if that happens I see it and I you know do something about it but um, I am going to take you know what I'm going to take the NYX bear with me concealer I'm just going to use that because lately uh, it, I have been kind of enjoying this on its own it's not super high coverage so it's not really going to do super much for dark circles but it is very hydrating and right now I'm telling you, my eyes are not in the mood for the Huda concealer. So I went downstairs to um, see where exactly my SD card had stopped recording and unfortunately it was more than halfway through, like less than halfway through the video because also uh, when I do these chatty kind of videos it always takes me a while to get in the flow so um, the first half of the video was a lot of junk that I had to edit out basically. And I was just so crushed because the part of the video where I finally had my thoughts together, I was finally coherent and I didn't have to stop every few seconds to re-say the sentence. That specific part of the video was unfortunately the one that was not recorded. And then I considered just going back and recording, re-recording the second part of the video. But in the end I felt like you know the the suboptimal part was there and the optimal part was not so i figured i might as well just re-record the whole thing and i had time to do all of that because last week was um like a national celebration here on thursday it was koningsdag which is the birthday of the king i'm going to take my uh, gucci finishing powder and because of that a lot of people just take like the friday off as well and depending on how things are at work i do have the opportunity or not wow that powder is like flying all over uh, in front of my camera but anyway so last year for example we had several of those days like a free thursday that a lot of people took the friday off as well or a free monday well after the easter holidays basically there are always a bunch of like free days coming up for the duchess in between easter and the beginning of june or so but unfortunately last year I was making kidney organoids and I had to be there like every day or every other day so I was not able to take any of these days off and this year I thought I, I don't have an experiment that requires me to be there every day so I'm going to do my best to take a lot of these days off because I've been working like an idiot the last month and I need a break like my my brain needs a break so I had taken these two days off and uh, that is also one of the reasons I had time to film a video like this and to refilm a video like this so in the end i had to refilm it i had to like redo the whole thing on saturday i'm going to take the uh, gucci bronzing powder in the shade 03 so like i said thursday was a day off but we like did things uh, with the three of us myself my husband and nicola so i didn't really have time to film that day i did have time to like sit down and think about what i'm going to film and then on friday i actually uh, filmed the video like the first video that failed after the failure i did not have the time or the energy to redo it on the day itself so i redid it the day after but i did have plans the day after like in the morning i wanted to hang out with my girlfriends and in the afternoon i was busy so I woke up pretty on time for a Saturday for me and I filmed half of the video before I went to the city to meet up with my friends and half of the video when I returned. So by the end of that day, and I also started editing it I think that day, I basically um, finished editing it also on Saturday. But I was also really tired and what I also realized consequently as I was doing it is that my uh, because the files are so big and my MacBook has a limited amount of I mean it's a lot like for my standards 256 gigs of memory on your laptop is quite a lot but when you upload two hours of HD footage most of the memory on your laptop becomes occupied by that and iMovie crashed a couple of times to the point where I was horrified that it will have lost my um, footage and the editing that I had done. It happened quite a few times and then when I started to export the file the first time it totally failed. So I just think my equipment is not suitable. I don't know why I continue blending this, it's already blended. For my blush and highlighter I'm going to take the beautifying uh, Pillow Talk palette from Miss Charlotte Tilbury and I'm going to do the usual which is mix these two shades together for a bit of a luminous PG cheek and use this one as a highlighter. So I just never really realized 
that I have, you know, technical limitations in the length of the footage that I can have. Oh, I went a little bit overboard here. Let me burn this out. Oh, I went quite overboard. Let's see if I can blend this out a bit or I have to take some of it away with the sponge. Maybe I need to take some of it away with the sponge. Anyway, that's all to say that it was quite a feat for me personally, as someone in my circumstances, to film that video. So I deeply appreciate also all of your comments and all of your reactions. And the fact that you, you know, commented and reacted to that video. Imagine how horrifying it would have been if I went through all this trouble and received very little, like, feedback on that video. So I'm really, really happy that you all enjoyed it uh, so much and it was totally worth the effort, 100%. But I have two more really fun videos coming. Uh, I want to do the top 20 metallic eyeshadows and on one of the upcoming weekends when I have time, let's see when that's going to be, I want to do my favorite shade in every palette. I feel really blushy today. I think I sort of underestimated how pigmented these powders are and I went a tiny bit overboard but you know it's fine it's fine it's okay I think the top 20 metallic eyeshadow video is going to be a little bit easier for me to record so hopefully I have time already this weekend the uh, favorite shade in every palette might have to wait until the next you know long weekend which will thankfully be quite soon I think 18 and 19 of May are again uh, well 18th of May is a holiday I want to say it's Ascension Day and then the Friday after that I plan on taking off so then I can do another one of those like longer type videos oh and I need to do my April Roundup and Empty Steel so oh no I'm going to do that this weekend I'm sorry you don't need to know about all of my YouTube planning um, next weekend for example I am going to be away Hubs and I are going to celebrate our 10 year wedding anniversary and we're going to Amsterdam to watch a Broadway musical we're going to see Spring Awakening in case you were curious and you knew anything about um, Broadway musicals, I love Spring Awakening. Obviously, I've never had the opportunity to see it live because, uh, first of all, I got into musicals a little bit too late for that. And second of all, you know, going to see just casually a Broadway musical is not so easy for me because I live on the other side of the ocean. Anyway, so we're going to see Spring Awakening. It's going to be with a Dutch cast and it's going to be in Dutch, which will be very interesting. I am so curious how these songs are going to translate in Dutch. Um, I'm sure they're going to do a great job and I very, I'm very, i very looking forward to that. I'm going to take my sponge and spritz it with a little bit of Fix Plus. I, what I'm not looking forward to is going back to Amsterdam. So I went to Amsterdam two weeks ago on Saturday because I... Well, long story short, but I sort of reconnected with a friend from high school and uh, she lives in Germany, but she was visiting here for a weekend to... Um, uh, celebrate the birthday of a friend or something and she contacted me and asked if I would be up for coming to Amsterdam for like a evening together to catch up okay before we continue chatting about Amsterdam because you probably think well, what the hell is wrong with you you lunatic Amsterdam is a beautiful city I'm going to tell you what we're going to do for a look I'm going to take the bronze seduction palette for my mattes because the uh, mattes in Celestial Nirvana are either too colorful for what I want or they are too cool toned if they are in the neutral color family. Um, so I'm going to take these two mattes. I'm going to apply this one very lightly through my crease and outer corner. I'm going to put a tiny bit more of this one, you know, in my usual winged out shape. And then we're going to jump back into the Celestial Nirvana palette because the idea is that I'd like to move away from the usual <laughs> usual suspects in this palette because uh, frankly when I open this palette it's to use this shade, the neutrals or the uh, matte green and I pretty much always ignore like the warmer tones in here. So I want to put this shade on my lid and this shade, like, I kind of want to do these two shades uh, on my lid. And probably we're going to do the uh, inner corner from the Midnight Seduction palette and I'm going to do some sort of a topper glitter. Oh, over top of these shades but I haven't decided whether I want Astro Luna Gold or VR Fire Opal for that so we're going to see um, how I feel about it last minute. But I'm taking the lighter brown matte with hopefully a very light hand because these shades are quite uh, deep for my skin tone. When I first moved here 17 years ago 
I ha I used to go to Amsterdam all the time because every time someone from my family or friend circle from Bulgaria would come to visit, obviously their first stop would be, hey, let's visit Amsterdam. And I used to really enjoy visiting the city, even though it's always been quite, it's always been a busy city because Amsterdam is kind of like a touristic attraction. But either I was younger and I didn't mind and I didn't notice how crowded it was there, or it has become even more crowded in the past years because I remember the last time I was there pre-pandemic was maybe around four or five years ago with um, my husband's family. I think we were there for a concert. I really can't remember what the reason was, but we stepped out into the city and I was like, oh my God, what is going on? Like you can't walk, there are so many people, everyone is stumbling into you. It smells like weed everywhere. And trust me, I'm not here on my high horse uh, judging people who smoke weed, absolutely not. I myself have dabbled, you know, into the THC quite a few times, but it's more that it's, it, it doesn't smell nice, you know, and I don't want to be out and about smelling weed everywhere. It was just so crowded and I got so, like, antsy from visiting Amsterdam that previous time I was there, that after that I thought, you know what, unless I absolutely have to go there, I refuse to. So then the pandemic uh, started, I had absolutely no business in Amsterdam. And I wasn't really planning on going there until next weekend when we have our uh, wedding anniversary celebration thing going on. But then my friend contacted me and I absolutely didn't want to say no because I just really wanted to hang out with her and I was not about to make her come to a different city for that. I went out of the house here, it was beautiful sunny weather. As I was approaching Amsterdam I went by train, it got really really dark and I knew it was going to rain so I was already prepared, I put on my raincoat and as soon as I stepped out of the train station it started basically pouring cats and dogs. So my first instinct was to hide in a store and I had two goals, well I had one goal in terms of a store and that was Uniqlo. I really wanted to go to the uh, phys physical Uniqlo store because Amsterdam is the only city in the Netherlands I think or maybe Rotterdam has one too or The Hague. Okay, I don't know. Irrelevant. I finally had an opportunity to visit a physical, physical store of Uniqlo so I was really excited about that and when it started pouring and I also, like, coming out of the train, realized that I may need to tinkle, so I wanted to find a bathroom pretty quickly. I realized on my way that very shortly after I get off the train station, there is a Bayankorf. And Bayankorf is like a luxury department store here, so they sell, like, luxury brands and they have several stores uh, around the Netherlands. And I usually go to the one in Eindhoven, which is like a different city in the Netherlands. And I usually really enjoy, I'm taking the deeper uh, brown mat now, by the way, and I usually love going to Bayankorf. It's, um, uh, it's very spacious, it has several floors. There's always like a really lovely like restaurant coffee place on the top floor. F fabulous facilities for everything. I usually enjoy massively going to the Bayankorf. But I entered the Bayankorf and because it's Amsterdam and it's full of tourists and because it was raining, all of these tourists were in the Bayankorf. And I entered the store and I thought, oh, this is not Bayankorf like Eindhoven Bayankorf, this is Amsterdam Bayankorf. So let me find the bathroom real quick and then I'm out of here. And then I went all the way upstairs to see a line that looked approximately five kilometers long to enter the bathroom. And I was like, fuck no. I exited as quickly as I entered. And then I went to Uniqlo and it was so crowded there. There was such a line in front of the fitting rooms that basically the whole point of me going to a physical store um, of Uniqlo was sort of made obsolete by the fact that I just didn't have the time or the energy or the desire to wait for a fitting room. So in the end I did end up buying a dress there, like a really lovely summer dress, but I basically found like a little corner in the store where it was a bit quieter. I took off my jacket and whatever else I could and I fitted the dress over my clothes to decide which size to get. And after that I did not have any desire to continue browsing the store. And then I met up with my friend and we had a really hard time finding a decent place to sit and have food and coffee. Probably there are lovely places to sit and have food and everything if you first of all know the city and second of all 
uh, are a little bit outside of like that central ring but neither of us really had the time I had to still catch a train back and she had to catch a plane at 4 a.m. so she also had to go um, back to her friend's house relatively on time and I don't want you to get me wrong the actual city of Amsterdam is really charming it's very much like 18th century architecture with like the uh, thin houses with the very long big windows it's very lovely the, with the grachten so the little like bridges all over the city with the canals charming wonderful um would highly recommend but all the tourists really ruin the experience so in fact if you are ever visiting the netherlands and you would like to experience that kind of you know typical architecture and a little bit of the true spirit of the city the true spirit of the country i would not recommend that you go to amsterdam i would recommend that you visit other cities that have a similar atmosphere there are quite a few of them aside from the actual city there are some really lovely muse museums in amsterdam the uh van, van gogh museum is there which i've visited several times and something that i will do for the first time next week with my husband is visiting the Rijksmuseum, which is the big like louvre type of museum I, it's not as big as the louvre but you know it's still quite big and it uh, features a lot of like the classic uh, dutch painters from the 18th century so now now I'm going to go into this palette and I want to say this shade will not apply very well with a brush so I'm not even going to try. This shade is a little bit strange. It's one of those that is so creamy that you almost can't pick up anything because it is so emollient. I'm going to keep this one here more towards like the outer part of the eye. Anyway taking the brush now and applying the lighter gold peachy shade in the inner portion of the lid have you guys visited the Netherlands have any of you ever been in the Netherlands and if you have which cities have you visited? I'm very curious. I could actually just put this shade in my inner corners as well, but I think it would actually be better if I went into the champagne from Bronze Seduction because that has like very bright yellow gold tones to it. So I think it would really like brighten my inner corners. Yeah, this works much better. I really like this. I do really like the two shades from uh, Celestial Nirvana next to each other. But like again there's no sparkle there's nothing exciting going on i'm just so bummed out oh you know what else i'm really bummed out about that it's been almost one and a half months since i ordered the venusian sunrise quad and uh i still don't have a quad and what's worse I'm, i don't have my money back either because customer service is not replying to my messages i've now resorted to resending them daily the same message uh, and I've even said in the message itself, I'm going to continue sending this daily until I get a response because I'm just so freaking irritated. At this point, as bad as I feel for the people that work in um, customer service, I, I feel like I am entitled because it's been one and a half month. I spent over 50 euros on that quad and I don't have it and I don't think they're going to send it out. And at this point, I don't want it either. We are going to finish off the lower lashes first before I decide which topper I'm going to do because I still can't decide which topper I'm going to do. So I'm going to basically take this shade again on my lower lashes and maybe the tiniest bit of this one towards the outer corner of the uh, eyes. And another reason why I have my desire to own the quad has diminished quite a bit is that from the few people that I have seen get it and review it, it just doesn't seem very exciting. It seems pretty one note. The gold topper seems like a very typical warm, flaky, coppery gold type uh, shade. And without even owning the quad, I would go as far as to say it seems like in a battle between that quad and um, Voristic Vixen, Voristic Vixen would probably win because Voristic Vixen can do more. From what I can tell, Voristic Vixen is more versatile. I'm taking the tiniest bit of the dark brown just towards the very outer edge of the eye here. Oh, you know what's funny? I posted an update on the Venusian Sunrise quad in my Instagram stories last week where I said, 
guys I know you've been asking me to review this quad but like I don't think I'm going to get it unfortunately as much as I wanted to I paid money for it I've been waiting over a month I don't think it's coming and then Pat replied with like hearts and didn't read the message but I was like the one time that they respond to something of me like tagging the brand like I literally tag them almost every other day when I post a look and the one time they respond is with hearts on a message which basically is like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I wish you were here to tell me whether you prefer VR Fire Opal or Astro Luna Gold or maybe both shall we do a little bit of both because I can't decide I think we did that last time as well and it turned out okay I'm going to take a little bit of VR Fire Opal because it has, you know, it ties in with my clothing quite nicely because it has the green duochrome and I'm going to apply that subtly all over my lid that is pretty, but I think I'm going to apply a little bit of Astral Luna Gold now for some more, you know, chunky flecks of glitter and I'm going to concentrate those more towards here where the center of the lid is I mean, it's really pretty. I think in artificial lighting, this is going to um, be very dimensional. I sort of wanted to show you the, you know, the dimensional effect that you get from the glittery eyeshadows under artificial lighting, because I don't think my daylight was allowing for you to see that. This whole exercise with the artificial lighting was also for me to convince myself that this look is a little bit more exciting than it looks because in the mirror it looks fine but it doesn't look very exciting and I don't think this pairing is going to go down in history as one of my best. To complete the look I have Flash 5 from the matte trans lipstick line on my lips. I think it perfectly fits the sort of like warmer reddish based tones of the two mattes from the bronze seduction palette. I feel like the cheekies are cheeking today. They're very present. I toned down as much as I could with the sponge but fuck it I'm just going to have very present cheeks uh, throughout the course of this day anyway let me know what you thought about this look uh, thank you so much for listening to all of my ramblings obviously feel free to chime in on any of the topics thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye